For more resources, visit rym.org. One, two, one, two, three. The Local Youth Worker is a daily podcast that's centered on five questions each week. Ranging from the practical to the professional, we're looking for answers to the questions you're asking. Whether you're in full-time, part-time, or even volunteer youth ministry, this podcast is for you. Hey everybody, we are back talking to uh, Matthew Eichard all this week, and I, I think I, I'm getting your last name right this time. Is that You are. Okay, mm-hmm. good. Um, I messed it up, I think, the, the earlier episodes <laughs> that we did, so um, I'll probably mess it up before we're over, but... Uh, um, I won't say Ickerd because then you said, right. don't say that. That would be great. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's actually interesting. If you type my last name into an iPhone or, a, or an Apple device, it will typically make the I lowercase and then capitalize the C. So I don't know what that means about future products, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> All right. Um, so getting to today's question, uh, yesterday we, we dealt with kind of how do you deal with disappointment and, uh, students that, that seems to be the, um, questions you get from students are kind of in that category. Um, and so, uh, you know, something I should have said from the outset is I did uh, email a lot of different youth workers and received feedback from questions that they received. And so one question we did receive, um, and I think this is one from you, uh, said, you know, di- is dealing with making decisions and kind of discerning God's will for your life. It's, you know, I'm making a lot of decisions about college or work or relationships. What am I supposed to do with my life? So as a student comes to you with that question, how would you answer them? You know, I typically just say, follow your heart and do whatever <laughs> that's in the moment, right? That's right. <laughs> Disney theology. That's the best for um, sure. Yeah. yeah. Just it, trust your heart. I, uh, I had a student, um, I, I actually harp on this issue so much, or rather, I teach on this issue so frequently. Uh, <laughs> and one of my students bought a mug for me one time that just says, follow your heart. Uh, now. That is awesome. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it, again, you know, we're sitting here, I'm sitting here at 33 years old. I've lived in the same house now for seven years. I've been married to my wife for eight years there's not a whole lot day to day that changes about my life. And then you remember back to what it's like being a teenager, right? I mean, you're, you're living there and every single day or at least every single week feels like it's full of this dynamic change, dynamic transformation and massive, what feel like life altering decisions. Um, You know, whether you go to sit at the lunch table with this person or that person, or do you send a note to that girl or to this girl, or or do you ask this person out or that person out, or do you ask no one out, or do you go with this group or join that team or this club, or, Mm. and then you get to, you know, sophomore, especially junior, senior year of high school, and that pressure just ramps up to the degree. And so, so often, you know, I have students that will, will come and will say, what, what do I do with my life? I mean, I could major in anything. I could go any number of places. I could choose not to go to college and just go to work mm-hmm. and, you know, or, or pursue this field or do that or, and that's really overwhelming. I mean, when we think about that kind of opportunity or those opportunities out there, that's a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, and so one of the ways that I, I, I try to address that question is um, really just being honest with our students in, in helping them understand, um, you know, ultimately what God has given us in his word. And we, I think, recognize that scripture is sufficient um, to serve as a guide for life and for godliness, um, that in Scripture we have everything necessary to to know God, to know the gospel, and to know a, a life that brings Him glory and praise and promotes our good, even in the midst of a fallen world. Mm-hmm. But we also recognize that Scripture is not exhaustive. Mm-hmm. And I, I think... 
over time and continuing conversation, helping students realize that as God's people, we actually act, we actually have to live in the tension between submitting to God's clear directives in Scripture and also enjoying the freedom that God gives to us as his people to pursue our desires and our burdens and the the use of our particular giftedness for the good of his kingdom in ways that bring him delight and us delight. Mm. <laughs> and you know when you're when you're 16, 17 years old, that doesn't exactly feel like <laughs> A, a reassuring message, right? Because you just want to say, well, God's clearly telling you to go to this school or yeah. to major in this thing. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of where I start, John. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and I think once again, just that theme that you, you started out is helping us see all the decisions these students are facing. And so just mm-hmm. the importance of entering in to what they're dealing with. And obviously, we worship a Savior who entered into his creation um, mm-hmm. That was, you know, transcendent, eternal, uh, infinite, but then draws near to us uh, right. through His Son, and so I think that is that is vital to all of these questions. Trying to see it from their perspective, and we, we can so easily skip over that or miss that. Um, but I think that does, you know, foster uh, humility and an understanding uh, that is Christ-like. So Matthew, that, that's really good. And so get, getting more specific, I mean, as you've done this, you said you're in your seventh year of ministry, and as mm-hmm. you have. Students come in and they give you a specific scenario of, you know, oh, the prom is this week and, you know, it's Bobby or Tommy that have asked me out and I can't decide which one or, you know, something maybe a little more serious, not putting down the prom, but um, college decisions. And they have this specific decision that they're dealing with. Um, how, do you, how do you kind of steer that student? Yeah, I, I think that's where you come back to what I was trying to describe earlier in you lean deeply into the truth of Scripture and recognizing that God has given it for our direction, for our good, and that it's authoritative, and that it does actually speak to us, and also leaning into the idea that that the Holy Spirit, as He sanctifies us, He also sanctifies our desires. And so it's okay as a secondary source to actually look toward that. So, if, if you're thinking about something, and again, we would say maybe as simple as a prom date, <laughs> you have to lean on, okay, what, what biblical principles can I draw from here? Mm-hmm. Even as something as, as simple and passing as a date to senior prom. Well, I, I think we would have to be very careful you know, to choose someone um, or to ask someone who um, is, is going to promote our sanctification. Mm-hmm. No, because clearly there are high schoolers who are not interested in promoting <laughs> um, sanctification. Um, we would have to say, you know, is this individual, uh, going back to a very specific command in Scripture, is this individual going to encourage me on this evening of my life to honor my parents well? Mm. Um, or perhaps would this individual encourage me to not honor my parents well? Um, and so I think you lean into biblical principles uh, mm-hmm. just like that. And then you have the freedom, you know, let's say, I can't remember the names of the two guys you threw out. <laughs> it but, might have been Bobby and Tommy. I can't remember. Okay, let's either. say Bobby and Tommy, right? <laughs> they both they both check the boxes on good for my sanctification, good for my relationship with my parents, you know, good godly young men, clean cut, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. So how do I choose between two good, honest, godly young men? in this situation. Well, maybe one is a brunette and drives a Trans Am and you think that's cool, (laughs) right? It's okay to say yes to one and no to the other based on your desires. If your desires are not in particularly clear biblical categories Mm. um, or of things that God either promotes or things that God condemns. Um, and so I think the same would play true as you move into larger decisions like college. Mm-hmm. Okay, again, are there things about this particular campus that would be good for my sanctification, my growth in grace? Or are there particular things about this campus that would be very unhealthy for me as I seek to grow in, in the Lord? Um, is there a strong um, biblical church that's present in that community that I can be a part of? Um, that would be especially important if you don't have access to a car. Mm-hmm. Um, 
are there going to be opportunities at this particular university for me to cultivate the gifts that God has given and that have already been recognized by people, you know, in my local context in high school? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think, you know, you kind of have to walk down that road and think through those, those biblical categories um, and, and think through the, the, the biblical information that God's given us. And then again, at the end of the day, you know, there are just practical decisions to be made based upon desire. Mm-hmm. Now, I'll kind of give you a, an example from my particular context. Clemson, by and large, is, is known as an engineering school. So if an individual is coming through high school, is good at math, you know, enjoys um, kind of the, the environment of a state school, I would hope that they would recognize that there's at least maybe one decent church. In Clemson. <laughs> um, you know, we have a, a myriad of, of faithful campus ministries that it would help them grow. Um, but those same things are true at NC State in Raleigh, North Carolina. Hmm. I think in, in that decision, you get to come alongside a student and say, it's, it's okay to just choose the one that you like more. Mm -hmm. It's okay to choose the one maybe that's, that's giving you more scholarship money as you move forward into life. Both are, are very well respected for their engineering programs. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think I've found as you have that kind of conversation with students, and even as I try to apply those things in my own life, you begin to recognize that God has actually given us a lot of freedom Mm -hmm. to, to live life as his people. Um, inside the bounds of his commandments and, and of his word. Um, that you don't have to, to be constantly second-guessing yourself, thinking, you know, I'm going to, to incur God's eternal displeasure because I, <laughs> you know, I, I, I chose to buy Swiss cake rolls instead of oatmeal cream pies. Today. <laughs> you know, it, it's just... I love that that's where you went, by the way. I love Swiss cake rolls. <laughs> But that's, I'm that's actually a I'm, I'm a fan of both of those, so <laughs> either one is great. Uh, but, you know, just, just realizing that God uses primarily his word and also our sanctified desires in decision making. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, again, you, you, you said so much good stuff, um, but just emphasizing God's freedom and, and to look at, I mean, he, he gave us his eternal word that does give us truth that can apply in so many different situations and he gives us boundaries, not because he's harsh, because he's loving. And that is actually very clarifying as we're thinking about these decisions. But then to know that there's there's freedom there as well. Um, and like you said, we're not going to, you know, incur God's wrath upon us uh, for those decisions. And that is, you know, very freeing. And again, to, to help students to see that, um, that they can see the value of, God, of God's word and how it speaks into to everyday life uh, for sure. So um, some very good words there, Matthew. Anything you want to add? I I think that's about it today, John. All right. Well, thanks again. Mm Mm-hmm.